does everybody know what like MapReduce frameworks are? And uh, has anyone uh, used Hadoop in their job or otherwise? Um, how about Disco? Any Disco users in the crowd? All right. So what I'm gonna uh, what I'm gonna talk about today is Disco. It's a it's a started life as a MapReduce uh, framework. But since uh, Disco 5, it's uh, much more. So a little bit of history on MapReduce. Uh, Google released its paper in 2004. Um, Hadoop uh, appeared in 2006, a couple years after, because Google did not unleash their code on the world. Um, and uh, Disco appeared uh, in 2008. Um, Nokia. Uh, did uh, Disco uh, at their labs down in um, Silicon Valley, uh, and they use it in production for a lot of their a lot of their stuff. I, I, I've never worked there, but I know the the guys who wrote it. Uh, Spark is uh, kind of in the same vein as all of these other projects, and the modern Disco is more comparable to Spark than it is to Hadoop, actually. So what is Disco? Um, it's an open source project, obviously. Uh, it's part of the uh, NumFocus family, so you can install it with Anaconda. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's got a distributed file system, much like uh, Hadoop. It uh, has HDFS. Uh, Disco has DDFS, which is, uh, and I mean, the spirit of Disco is it's much more lightweight. Uh, it's much more lightweight, and it's uh, uh, it's a lot uh, doesn't have any XML configuration files. It's very easy to install. It's very easy to run. You write your MapReduce jobs in in Python, although it's a language agnostic framework. The back end is written in Erlang, so it's quite efficient and uses the cores and it uses uh, you know the network very well. And um, you know it's it's a lot smaller framework. When we were evaluating, I was working at an ad tech company called Chango when we decided to start working with Disco a few years back. And when we were evaluating whether we were going to do uh, Hadoop or Disco, because we were a Python shop, um, one guy was kind of given the Hadoop, and the other guy was given the Disco. And we're downloading stuff and installing it. And I think I had the Hadoop, and I was you know getting through my second config file trying to get HDFS up and running and the guy across the room was like yeah I just finished my first uh, job and he was actually you know it's like install go and it's really small and, and really quite fast too. Um, that being said it does scale up. We've had uh, 100 plus node uh, clusters. Um, at Chango we were putting uh, 10 gigabytes or 10 gigabytes 10 terabytes a day through it um, the new model is not MapReduce anymore. It's a pipelined uh, data flow. And that's the main guts of my talk is uh, post MapReduce. Uh, and it looks a lot more like Spark than it does Hadoop. Um, OK, so I covered all that stuff. Who uses this stuff? Chango, as I said, is an ad tech company. Um, they're, uh, they're on these ad exchanges that uh, you know, process hundreds of thousands of requests a second. All of those create logs and they get processed with the Disco framework. Uh, obviously Nokia, some trading companies, Mozilla on my project, we're using it uh, at Mozilla as well. I got NumFocus on here because Disco is a NumFocus uh, product as well. It's in the family. Okay, so when I talk about post MapReduce, what am I talking about? So the, we've uh, generalized the execution uh, into uh, not just map, shuffle, reduce. It's uh, any arbitrary number of stages. So each stage has a grouping, and this is how data is collected for the stage, uh, and a task, which is a user-defined function. Actually, it's more complicated, like more sophisticated than that. But that's the essential, the essential idea behind it, 
is to break it into stages. There's a bunch of different types of stages. So that's listed along the bottom here. And I'll quickly go over them because you know, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, and then give a couple of examples of what a pipeline in Disco looks like. And we'll look at some code too. Okay, so these are the, the way that the different types of stages that you can build for your pipelines. So the first one is called split. And basically what split does is say every input, uh, the, the boxes here are like input files or blobs. They're units uh, of distribution in the distributed file system. The gray boxes are nodes. So split is uh, usually the first stage in anything. It, it gets data out of a file into, uh, into a process or a task. Um, group all says take all data and put it on a one uh, process running on one node. Group label uh, is talking about uh, the labels. These are partitions in the Hadoop world, uh, or, but in Disco we call them labels. And a label is, uh, can be output from any task. So you can split up data and do groups, group buys, and so on. So that gets all of the data uh, labeled, and all of the data with the same label will go to the same task. So that's group label. There's only two more. Um, there's group label node, which is like group label except for just one node. So it says, after I've uh, produced labeled outputs, group it all on that node into one. So here we've got uh, label, you know, data streaming out of a previous stage into blue, green, and pink, uh, you know, labeled partitions, and then there's one process for each one of them. You might recognize this as kind of uh, a combine or a shuffle uh, type of function. The last one is group node, which says take everything regardless of its label and collapse it down. This might be a final uh, you know, process step to get all of your data from your job. So with these building blocks, we can then build arbitrary uh, pipelines. Um, if you're in MapReduce, you typically would chain, if, you know, if you're in Hadoop, you would chain jobs together to do something similar to this. There's a lot of overhead in chaining jobs together and so on as well. Um, it's much easier to manage and replay. If you keep it all in one pipeline, it's much more efficient. So the way that we're going to talk about it, we're going to look at a fairly simple SQL-like statement, and we'll see what it looks like as a... Uh, as a pipeline. So down in the bottom, red there, select x, sum, where, we got a group by, we have an order by. So this would typically be two uh, MapReduce jobs. Because you select your key, which would be your group by, would be x and z in your first uh, stage. And then your second one, your second key, would be z, because you're going to sort it at the end. So what we've done, we're just, the boxes here represent nodes. Um, the rectangular-ish shaped uh, things are blobs or, or uh, labeled data. Uh, if it's black, that means it's unlabeled or just you know, data on disk somewhere. Uh, once it's color coded, that means it's been assigned a label. All that data is partitioned together. So what we first set up is a split. Uh, and then the output of our split is partition data on each node. Then we do a group node label to get all that data together. This would be like a combine. So in, this, in the split task, we would be filtering where greater than 25, and we would be emitting it based on a group by of X and Z. Okay? In the second step, so this would be like a, a shuffle phase uh, before a reduce. In the second phase, you notice also we have uh, during a task execution, pipeline execution, you can either sort or merge your data, and you get to specify it will do it on the key, right? The key that you specify. So in our next box, which would be the same machines, Basically, we only got two nodes in our cluster here. 
uh, you would be running the group label, which would be a classic reduce, uh, and you'd be summing up uh, your y. Uh, you'd also do that in the combine, the previous phase. And then you start your new map, which is output uh, into the second side where the pink uh, labels are. And this is where you're trying to do your order by Z, which is your final group all into the, into the output. So it looks a little hairy, but uh, it's pretty similar to, to MapReduce, except it's arbitrary pipelines. What does this look like in code? Um, I've not actually written the functions, the process functions that you see here, uh, and simplified a little bit, but this is essentially what you're doing when you're building these things. Again, you see there is like five. You're doing a select. Our process function, which we write, would iterate over a file. Uh, you know, uh, filtering by x greater than 25 and emitting out to labels, out to our three labels. Maybe this is supposed to And uh, the final step there is the pipeline uh, where you group them together and then you submit it for execution. Okay, so uh, the talk is uh, just a half an hour, and uh, so I want to talk about the other components of the Disco ecosystem as well. Uh, I gave a talk on the last uh, Pi Data in Silicon Valley on Hustle, which is built using um, these uh, pipelines, and it's a, a column-oriented database built on top of Disco uh, using LMDB, uh, as the, uh, as the uh, B plus tree. So data is stored as uh, B plus tree data. Inferno is a stream processing and job scheduling language for uh, Disco MapReduce. And we're working right now on a Blaze integration as well so that you can drive the Disco back in, these pipelines, much like you saw uh, Matthew uh, he just gave a talk on Blaze about it driving Spark you would drive it this very similar way. So we're working on an integration there. I'll give you a, a little taste of what this kind of thing looks like in Hustle. Hustle's got a, 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 a DSL uh, in Python for its uh, relational uh, uh, query language. And this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, so you do, it looks very SQL-like, but this is in fact Python. Um, and you can, I mean, it, it's really for large, large data sets. It supports joins. Uh, it's, it has this funky little where clause syntax that gives you kind of a higher level. This is similar to what you saw with Blaze or SQL Alchemy, where we're overriding operators to provide a little bit higher level functionality in the DSL. Um, you can do aggregations, you can do group buys. Uh, and joins. So this query, I've kind of color coded the, the different bits of it uh, and represented down below the disco pipeline that similar to what we saw in the last example and which part uh, corresponds to, uh, and this one's a little bit more complicated than the last pipeline we saw because it also has a join. The cool thing about uh, these pipelines is that they're dynamically created. Uh, so in Hustle, if I just do a simple select, you would just have one stage pipeline. If I did a select um, with an aggregation, you would get three stages to do your group by, uh, and so on. So with a join, so it, as soon as you hit return uh, in uh, you know this. Uh, on this query in your Python interpreter, uh, it would build the pipeline for you and submit the job. The cool thing about Disco is that the latency for running a job is near zero. So hello world in uh, Disco that like lights something up, reads a few lines, comes back, is like a second and a half on any arbitrary size uh, cluster. It's really unlike Hadoop 
um, in that Hadoop, the same hello world, takes a couple minutes, right? Um, so uh, it's, it turns out that uh, uh, Disco is really good for this type of application because of its low latency. Also, because all the data is stored as B plus trees, LMDB, that's a project worth checking out too. It's a very fast uh, memory mapped B plus tree. And, um, you know, so these queries, especially if you've got, it really uh, leverages off the uh, where clause because it's, you know, you've got all your data in ranges and the queries can be really fast. We saw in very big data sets, uh, this stuff is a lot closer to performance in Vertica than it is to Hive. Like, it's, it's on the same order of complexity as Vertica queries. Um, so check that project out. Um, so uh, yeah, I just wanted, if, if for, for anybody working in the Python world um, and using Hadoop, you kind of owe it to yourself to check out Disco. It's a mature product. Um, it's well supported. There's lots of companies like Mozilla using it. Um, and uh, it's got a rich uh, uh, ecosystem uh, for, uh, and quite a few uh, contributors, especially people at Nokia, Chango, and, and Mozilla. Those are the main contributors right now to these, uh, these projects. Any questions? You didn't get a chance to really touch on it in Inferno much, but um, you mentioned that Disco was language agnostic for the workers. Can you have like jobs that steps in your Inferno like streaming set that are in different languages, or is that all you mean? Well, typically you would. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this microphone. Uh, typically, you would get. Um, You'd use the same language uh, for one particular job. Um, there's a bunch of workers. By the way, you get a Mozilla pin for a bottle. Thank you. So the, the main interface is a RESTful JSON kind of interface to the Erlang uh, engine. Um, but workers are, can be written in any language. The default one is Python, but we have a Go worker and an OCaml worker. Um, it's pretty fast, actually. Yeah, I, I used to do OCaml. I just the syntax is horrible compared to Python, but you know, yeah. it's fast. Yeah, sure. and you can do it in Erlang as well. Um, Python is a really good application, though, for it, and I would say that's like ninety percent of the Disco jobs are written in Python. Any other questions?